Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 101 of the Road to Top series. I am Toasty FM. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for the success of the of the 100th episode. It was really great. Um, thank you to Lujo for uh, retweeting me, um, you know, and looking at my 100th video. It meant a lot to me um, because he is somebody that um, I look up to and somebody that uh, inspired me to create my own channel with his videos. Uh, so thank you upon uh, thank you about that. Um, no live comp, no I uh, mean no um, face cam today. I'm sorry, I look kind of shabby. Um, I played a little golf this morning and I look like crap. So um, you know I think man, and I actually didn't look that bad. I do wish I had a better camera maybe or a camera that wasn't straight at the screen. The fact that I have to like. I don't know. I'm still trying to work out the kinks. Maybe I'll get a, a webcam, um, a little bit better, better quality or something like that. But uh, that's definitely something I'm thinking about in the future. So, uh, so just so you guys, you know, just know that. Uh, but as far as the game, the game itself, where where we've unfortunately for for well maybe unfortunately for you guys at home, we have qualified for Europe. We have qualified for a top five spot. Uh, really, we've run away with it. Um, there's nobody even within a shout of us right now. We're 14 points ahead of the our closest competitor um, with 14 games. That's only a 12 point. They can only make up 12 points. So we're in Europe again, which is great. And now we have to fight for that number four spot so we can get it an automatic spot. Uh, into, or maybe, I don't know if, is it an automatic spot to the group stage, or is it into the playoff? But either way, it, it'd be great to have that, um, just a little bit farther, hopefully, you know, continue to, uh, to, to get our European reputation, so we don't have to face the likes of Celta Vigo anymore, maybe face a small team, and somebody where we can, um, you know, get farther into Europe that way, um, but yeah, so, so overall, great, I mean, since, uh, since our, our, our amazing uh, semi-final win against Porto, uh, we came back against Olenge. Two goals from Nun Correa. Excellent again. He's back on form. He not scored in this game, um, but still more goals all around. Um, didn't score in this game either, but... You know, we're playing well. It's great to see. It seems like everybody's scoring well. We're, we're in some great form at a great time of the season. Um, but we have to keep up with Sporting. Sporting are now four points ahead of us. With they have, We have a game in hand, though. So if we win today, we'll be within a point. I mean, they've been playing very well as, uh, also. I mean, we're also catching up to Braga. So, I... I mean, really, with, with some. I mean, if we continue to play at this pace, there there could be a fa a fight for third place on our hands, um, which would be beyond belief. I can't even fathom that. But we still have to. But beyond that, we still have to continue winning our games. We have a game against uh, a finance today, a team that we've struggled against this year. Um, uh, a team that uh, we've played a couple times uh, in the league. We've beat them, um, but it hasn't been easy. I mean, we beat them in the semifinal, but that was a hard game. Uh, we played them in the Liga Nage, another hard game. We played them in the Taça de Portugal, hard game. I mean, we, this is a team that... Uh, you know that we, we that have been close. I mean, we've beaten a lot of good teams this year, but they've kind of been the one that have been really on our behinds. So we have, definitely have to look out for them for sure. Um, so let's get into the lineup and see who we're gonna be playing with. I guess this is the lineup as always. Um, Jamar George has kind of picked up his play a little bit. I think he's definitely, um, you know, getting used to our system. Um, his last three games have been solid performances, um, which I'm happy to see him do. I mean, everybody else is playing great. Obviously, our, our, our top performers have been uh, Correa and Diop, also top goal scorers. Valdezir is getting there, too. DeVos had a fine, fine season. Uh, Jerzy George is coming into form at a great time. Luke Carrington, despite still not really moving into that ball-winning midfield spot, he's still very good. I mean, overall... I'm really, I'm really very pleased. I mean, 
no matter what happens in these last four games, um, four, well, five games if you include the Tasa Portugal final, I think it's been a very successful, a very successful year, and um, and I'm really looking forward to next year being in Europe again. Um, so let's get into the game today. Uh, we're away from home against Fadence. Um, and the former Rafa Silva team, that's who he, when he moved to Braga, now he's at Benfica, uh, struggling this season, I would have to say, I guess, I guess I really don't have anything else to talk about today, so let's talk about Benfica, um, big derby this weekend against Sporting, um, you know, considering last week's game, you know, Porto, uh, Drew against Braga, so we have a three-point cushion. Uh, I think they. Who owns the tiebreaker? I think. Who, who does own the tiebreaker? I think because I think both games between us and them ended one-one in both games. So I think you'll go to tiebreaker, which I believe is goal differential. I think they have a better goal differential than we do. So. Um, we can't afford to lose on Saturday, um, for sure. Um, so it, it's going to be a big weekend for us. Um, uh, Rafa Silva, I mean, we've had, and, and considering, I mean, we played well, you know, we made it to the quarterfinals of the, of the Champions League, but, uh, uh, the Benfica team this year is struggling in certain areas. Obviously, Smith has been great. Mitroglou ha was great. Um, in the absence uh, of Jana, Jana Shims has been picking up the last couple weeks. He was out a lot of this year, well, with an injury. Salview has been woeful, and I feel bad for Salview. He seems like a really nice guy. He seems like he loves the club, but he's had a plenty of injuries over the last few years, and I think it's definitely catching up to him at this point where. Um, his, he's becoming a detriment to the team. I know, I think, I think, uh, Rui Vitoria, our, our, our head coach likes him before his speed. Um, but he just misses that last pat, that last little, last bit uh, of touch just to get the ball where it needs to go to put guys in position to score. Um, Rafa Silva is a player that, we brought in, you know, uh, the highly talented player, Portuguese, had been in Braga, performing very well, and he's come to Benfica and hasn't really scored. Uh, he's been better than Salvio, I'd say. Um, his problem is basically just missing a, uh, a kind of that finishing touch and, you know, just missing that, you know, the shot is a little bit wayward. Just not exactly what we would want. Oh, no wonder this game's taking so long because we're on extended highlights. Um, and just not, not, you know, just not scoring the goals we would expect of a player of his quality. Uh, getting to positions but not scoring. Uh, Zivkovic and Servi have been really good this year. Obviously losing Gedge, in my opinion, was a huge loss for us. Um... His ability to kind of—he was playing at us as a second striker uh, with uh, Mitroglou in in, um, in Jonas's absence, and he's playing very well. Obviously, sold to PSG now. Um, hopefully, he can as we go down one 0 I'm telling you, man, these this team's hard to play against. I don't know what it is about them, but um, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate. We'll just let the thing load. I don't care. Um, less editing I have to do. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, but Servi and Zivkovic. Zivkovic has an amazing ability to cross the ball, um, which has been a delight, a delight to see this year. Uh, PZ has been very good in the middle of the park. Um, Andre Orta started there at the beginning of the season, but, um, PZ has reclaimed his spot after playing in the, at uh, kind of right wing last year with Nat Sanchez's kind of rise um, into power. Uh, the fullbacks, I mean, Grimald and Smith at fullbacks are, I believe, the best young fullback combo in Europe. 
Um, Lindelof has been great. I think it's it, having Luis Zon play so much this season kind of disappointing. I would hope that a li- guys like Lisandro Lopes or um, Jarvel would say, this is my position for the future. I want to take it over. Um, Lindelof has been very good, but I, I'm surprised nobody else has really taken that spot. Um, Ederson and goal is spectacular. Um if he doesn't leave this summer, it's a miracle. If he doesn't go to whatever, Manchester City or maybe even United if De Gea leaves. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of options there for sure. I've heard even maybe uh, Real Madrid because they're not. I'm not really sure they're, they're happy with Keylor Navas. Um... Samed might leave the Bayern Munich. That's what I'm hearing. But they're also inter- interested in Benjamin Hendricks as we go 2-0 down. Um, very not happy with this game so far. I, is it me or is our team just not interested? Like, we're in Europe now. We don't care. Um, maybe I should probably... Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Jimenez, I think, is um, getting to the point where he's kind of getting frustrated because Mitroglou is getting all the playing time. But fair play to Mitroglou. He, fin- he scores goals. And as a striker, that's kind of your thing. Um, I like I like Raul Jimenez. He seems like a good player in that he um, he's a hard worker. If you're up... A goal, and the other team is playing a possession style. Then having a player like him, who just like he'll run around center backs all like the last ten minutes, like a wild man, um, trying to kind of make it, and he does a very good job to that. But as an out-and-out striker, I think Mitroglou is a better finisher for sure. We've not had the ball enough, I don't believe. Like that's. Maybe it's early. Usually I see it early, but I feel like that's just not – nothing's happening on this left-hand side. Well, there's, there, Diop's not getting – I mean, he's the one that has the ability to cross the ball, but he's not getting enough of the ball there. Um, mistakes. We've made quite a few mistakes. Scoring chances. Have we had – we've had a half chance. We haven't had any chances, really. Um, I feel like – I feel like we need to go on this left-hand side, get the ball into Diop's, like, feet, see if he can do something, uh, and look for more direct passing. I think possession, I think they've, they're have they sitting back and there's a lot letting, – we're just letting them – not letting us play and having – and doing whatever they're doing. Even though they're, they have more possession, but I, just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. We're just not playing well this game for whatever reason. It just seems like the guys just didn't show up today. Um, who else? Who else? Um, Samadi punched somebody last a couple weeks ago, and he looks like he's going to be out for a few weeks whenever the Portuguese FA punishes him. And he's been another guy that I think loves the club, but he's just not qual- He's not a quality kind of number six defensive midfielder uh, for the likes of Benfica. I think he should leave. Um, I know he works hard. He learned. I mean, he learned. He. I mean. When George Jesus was there, I think he spoke better Portuguese than George Jesus does because George Jesus sounds like a drunk man half the time. And um, and somebody speaks like perfect, perfect Portuguese, but there's more to being a player for Benfica than, than just learning the language. Um, and he seems like a nice guy, but as a squad player, I think he's fine, but he's a little bit unreliable. I know we try to convert him uh, from more of a box-to-box midfielder to a more... Uh, uh, defensive midfielder, and um, it worked. He played very well a couple of seasons ago, but I think this. I think we see we when you see Fasha play compared to Samadish, Fasha he has injury problems, but um, man, Fasha is like just next level quality um, player. Um, I mean, there's really much pretty much pretty much what everybody Elizu Elizu, uh, Papsik. Um, as Cristiano Oliveira, Benfica podcast, check them out if you 
if you have time. Um, calls him Papsik, um, and he's fine. Andre Al Almeida, always a solid wing back, uh, squad player. Um, uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, Benfica. I mean, obviously we're top of the table, we're having a good season, but um, it's gonna be a struggle when you're here near the end. Near the end, as we we allowed a third goal. This has just not been good enough, whatsoever. I'm gonna lay into this team when um, goal like technology, people. I feel like Jean Mar George has got that, or is it just me? I feel like he, I feel like he got a place there, but I feel like he got the header off the line. But I mean, realistically, it doesn't matter. We have played absolute crap this game. Um, it's been terrible. Very, very bad. <laughs> that, was just, that was a bad. That was our worst performance all year. We've played. Benfica, Porto, Sporting, we've been in the Europa League, we've done all these things. That was our worst performance of the season. And um, it's not the time we wanted it. You know, we're trying to make a run here. And I think that result just puts a damper in our um, in our in our in our plan. So let's look at the at the schedule for the last episode of the season. So guys, like I said, um, hugely disappointing. Very, very, very disappointing loss. Um, I mean, probably our worst loss since that game against Celta de Vigo. It is our biggest loss, technically, 0-3 um, of the season. And performance-wise, I completely... It was just not good enough, like it was against Celta de Vigo. That was just not good enough. I'm not happy with that result. They seem to... Whatever they seem to do, tactically, uh, worked to perfection. I don't know if it was our team that wasn't ready to play or if they were just that much better than us or they had some tactical thing, but they just they were just better than us on every department that today. Um, and that was very disappointing. But we still have nine possible points uh, left this season. Mafra, Sporting, and Braga. And then Braga again. So, obviously, we're going to come back against Mafra. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to come back against Braga uh, at the Stadio Nacional, that's a Portugal final, it's going to be huge, bomb, bing, bomb, we're going to win, we're going to get a cup, I hope, I have no idea, but, um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, but we have to, I'd like to keep picking up some points, um, maybe challenge for the fourth spot, that loss today hurt us, definitely, so, we still have a chance to win silverware, so let's, uh, so let's get that. Let's do it tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and take care of yourselves.